Hello everyone, welcome back to the video series for the VCAP network vitalization. Today we're gonna cover the objective 1.3 of the exam group linked uh, and please uh, follow the, the next steps. Today we're gonna talk about transport zone. So I just logged on my vCenter. So go in network security, installation, just a quick web web. So go in management. I can see my manager and my controllers. In Rust preparations, where we install our VIPs in each hosts. In logic preparations, we can see where we define it, our IP segments. So we can see here how the, the vKernel on the VXLAN stack. So we can see all the IPs here. Now we can see the segment ID that we define it with 5000 to 5900 and transport zones. We're going to put here an uh, image then you can uh, see how transport zone works. Transport zone basically is responsible to define uh, which clusters can talk to each other through VXLAN overlay protocol. So imagine the situations that I have one cluster that I want to talk to another clusters through VXLAN, so I need to put both in the same transport zone. But now imagine that I have another cluster that is not necessarily need to talk to us in a daily basis. So uh, on these clusters, I not necessarily much add these clusters on the transport zone. So on top of that, this cluster that is not part of this transport zone will not be receiving the NSX features, which may not necessarily any kind of license for the NSX. Okay, and the only way, uh, remember, and if this occurred, the only way to connect both words, uh, which is VXLAN to VLAN, we need through our uh, edge gateway. Okay. Now you can see you can see here uh, in clusters, I can add another clusters. And every time that I put a new clusters inside of the transport zone, if I don't have installed the VIBs prior, the only uh, actions to add these clusters on the transport zone will be automatically installed the VIBs for you. Because remember, when I defined it on the previous lessons, I defined the IP pools for, the, for for that cluster. So if I add a host or something in that cluster and so on, they're going to install automatically for us. So uh, another thing that makes your life easily is if you want to, for some reason, remove a cluster from transport zone, Every time you remove that cluster from the transport zone, the the VMware NSX will automatically uninstall the VIPs for you. But depends of the version uh, of you are running, they are gonna put the host in maintenance mode, remove the VIPs, and reboot the hosts. On the nearest versions of the v v NSX, the reboot is not more mandatorily. So you're gonna do uh, exactly this. If your cluster is configured with uh, distributed resources, scheduling, they're gonna put a host in maintenance mode. We're gonna evacuate every machines there, remove the VIPs, and then remove it back from the maintenance mode, and then we're gonna move to another host on that cluster. And so until the entire clusters uh, is get them removed, but this make it more more easy and automatically for you. And here you can see, I have here, here the possible to see my transport zone. And then you can ask me, why I cannot see 
and I cannot create a, a universal transport zone. That's simple because my manager is still in standalone mode. The universal I can only create it when I do cross the center, which means I need to upgrade at least my first controller to primary to be able to create a universal transport zone. And even if the transport zone is a very simple task to do, it's mandatory and crucial to define uh, which cluster we're going to talk to which clusters in, 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 in each uh, VXLAN. And thanks so much.